all new moves and changes made to the weapons in Monster Hunter Wilds. The Greatsword. For everyone who thinks size matters. I'm not gonna lie, I actually didn't see that much different with this one. I like uppercuts though and there appears to be an uppercut counter, which is really cool. It's followed up by an attack that requires the slinger, as it sounds like he pulls himself in to do this attack. There's a big change that the Greatsword trailer didn't show, but in the focus mode overview video they show that you can now turn around whilst charging a standard charge, which is a massive change. You could turn a bit before, but it was just a little bit. Here they almost do a 180, but I think that even a 360 is possible. The focus Focus mode looks like you're about to slice the monster in two as you run past it. But that's about it for the greatsword. Not so many new things at first glance, but it does look very good. Heavy bowgun if you only care about damage. It appears like this bowgun can now rapid fire like the light bowgun and I also saw what looked like a different backward dodge animation. We get ignition mode which looks just like a wyvern heart but no signs of wyvern snipe so far. In the final move the hunter puts some kind of explosion in the barrel and at first I assumed that this was a wyvern shot but I don't think it is as there's no charge animation and since the monster attacks it could even be a potential counter move. The focus attack looked like a charged up sticky shot which was very interesting. I wonder how the attachments are gonna work in this game as before we had barrels and silencers but this seems to change with almost every iteration of Monster Hunter. The Insect Glaive. When all you want to do is play the floor is lava. Looks like you'll be able to collect two buffs at a time with some insects, as there seems to be space for two just like in Rise. That alone is massive but what you might not have noticed is that the buffs during this trailer are also collected by simply attacking. I wonder if this is tied to the focus mode or to a specific insect. Now obviously we get the stripper pole move that everybody saw but the insect now also seems to attack as you perform some moves although this could be insect specific as well but the move that I'm most interested in is the mounted one. That looks so seamless it makes me wonder if it's possible just to spam that and then spend most time of the hunt on top of the monster but only time will tell. The focus mode attack is a spinning move which ends in you firing the kinsec from your arm and I have to say this weapon is looking really good right now. The gun lands for when you only care about explosions. The new sidestep looks really nice as it allows you to fire shells while doing it. It even had a follow up that allows you to attack sideways. Then there's this swipe attack where you fire all shells at once followed by a worm stake and a guard that looks like insta block with how the shield glows. Meaning if you time your guard you'll probably get less knockback. You can also charge shells while guarding and there seems to be a quick reload followed up by an attack that uses all shells. The focus mode also looks absolutely crazy, the gun part of the weapon moves out of the way and the blade starts spinning, probably the most over the top move we've seen so far. A lot of these changes seem to make the weapon more mobile, making me wonder if Blast Dash is still in the game, as that is what gave it mobility before. The Hunting Horn, for all the duders. I honestly thought that the new AoE stuff looked really cool, they are called Echo Bubbles, and I think this will make a lot more people try the Hunting Horn, as it just looks a lot more appealing than just standing there duding. We had something that was somewhat like this before in World, but it looks like they're amping it up a lot. The animation for this is really funny too, and it looks like you can now go from performance into an attack back into performance. There's also a new attack with a little hop in it, and the focus mode move throws the weapon and then blasts wherever it hit as you keep rocking on on your weapon. Not sure if I caught all changes in this one but then again I'm not a hunting horn main so I really don't know. I have to say that they're doing a really good job making it look more appealing though as it looks a lot more interesting. The Longsword, Capcom's favorite child. Looks like some changes were made to make it a bit more slicey and smooth. Looks like you can now attack while moving backwards and my guess is that this is a replacement for the Fate Slash as that move was not all that useful. We see it being used sideways as well. This opening move looks a lot like a wirebug attack from Rise, and the helm splitter gets a flashy follow up move and so does the spirit slash. This particular move looks like a new counter and then there's a whole new move which you seem to get when your spirit gauge is at max level. The focus mode is a poke and slice which is honestly the only move that I thought didn't really fit the longsword as much but everything about this showcase just screams smooth to me. It looks like they're doubling down on making this weapon as smooth as possible by giving it more options and follow ups. The charge blade, when you have to use something complex to stand out. We saw a condensed spinning slash move which is a switch kill introduced in Rise and we saw the X icon at the top left corner so it looks like you'll have more choices on what to charge now. As when you chose that playstyle before you couldn't charge the sword anymore. There's also a new spinning attack after a discharge with what I assume to be a guard point and a focus mode attack looks a lot like the unsheathed attack from sword and shield and afterwards you cut the monster into pieces. 
The sounds in this showcase is what really stood out to me as they were more slicey and metal like. And I wonder if this is specific to this particular charge blade or that this is what all of them sound like. The hammer. For those who only care about boinking heads. My lord, this one finally seems to receive what I always said it needed. Dodging while charging. Yes, something like that was possible in Rise, but only in a very specific scenario or very shortly after obtaining a charge. But this one seems to be available whenever you want. Perhaps it has iframes, perhaps it has not. Either way, it's still a win. It's some kind of slinger dodge or something, as you can see a rope being fired into the ground. And it also looks like the big bang combo has super armor now. In the beginning they even show a sidestep and that's a lot of well needed mobility if you ask me. There's this spinning animation which looks a little different than normal but it could be the spinning bludgeon move that they have just changed a bit. Also there appears to be a new counter as this attack does not look like the water strike that we had in Rise. It looks more so like the golf swing you would see after completing a spinning bludgeon. And the focus mode attack looks a lot like the spinning bludgeon move as well. I'm kind of confused on which one is the spinning bludgeon now but we'll see. The Mobility changes are great and if this counter is any good then Hammer will be a blast to play. Light Bowgun, for those who don't want to learn monsters moves. The reload on this seemed insanely fast. I wonder how many levels of reload speed he had as that looked insane. There's a bar you can charge to fire rapid shots and you can dodge and shoot at the same time while using that. There's a short animation before you can use this which puts on the extended mags and there also seems to be some kind of siege mode which reminds me of the heavy bowgun from Generations Ultimate. But this one looks like it really only lasts very very short. Probably just one powerful shot. The move they do on jumping off a monster reminds me a bit of World's bow shot after doing a clutch grapple to tenderize parts and you only seem to get one mine this time around but three focus shots. The focus mode sounds like it's a charge shot which makes me wonder if the focus skill could affect that. But the real question I still have with this one is if the rapid fire mode still fires whatever ammo you had equipped or if this has its own ammo type kind of like the switch skill in Rise. The sword and shield aka the beginner weapon. The sounds on this one were a bit weird. I mean I like beefy sounds don't get me wrong but does this sound like a sword and shield to you? I guess it's because elemental weapons get special sound effects now and this is the fire one, but I digress. The biggest change seems to be that you can now move sideways whilst attacking. We see the sliding slash which now seems to be part of a combo as it's not done on a slope. There's one move that goes by really quickly that you can barely even tell what actually happens, but it looks like that's a counter, which was already present in Rise, but I can't really tell if this one is new or not. It ends with a small jumping attack where you stab the sword down multiple times, and the focus mode attack looks like a grapple move starting with a sword stab and shield uppercut, ending in a downward shield bash. Pretty cool stuff. I wonder if the counter requires any guard skills to pull off consistently, and other than that, it looks great. The Switch Axe, for all the rodeo cowboys. The first combo we already know, but it ends with an uppercut, and I don't remember that. Is that one new? Maybe it wasn't World? I didn't really play World Switch Axe, so I don't really know. I think it's new, and I like it. There appears to be a counter trigger by timing a switch from blade to axe or vice versa and it looks like the invincible gambit is back. I wonder if it still has as much super armor as this time around it can't be balanced out with wire bugs. The focus mode does a lot of slashes and ends in what looks like a very fast discharge and I mentioned it before already but I never really know how to feel about this weapon but if you can counter attacks by simply timing your switches between axe and sword mode that would be really cool. The bow for those who want easy mode. Now more than ever as you'll be able to shoot a tracer arrow so you don't have to aim your follow-up attacks. Looks like they're changing the way that coatings work a little bit as I highly doubt that they would show 50 coatings right here in the middle of your screen. And before coatings get equipped it even said plus 8 for some reason. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to change it or whatever this means but it looks like they're doing something with it. It also seems like we get a new dodgeball animation. That's right this is not a new attack. I think this is a dodgeball move that we had in Rise. There's also a small jump move and maybe this does mounting damage. If that's still a Thing. The arrow rain is back from world's bow and there also seems to be a new move which shoots multiple arrows. I really wonder how that one works as we don't see too much of it. The focus mode seems to do this spread shot and it makes me wonder how focused it really is as it appears to hit pretty much all weak spots. My guess is that this weapon will be at the top of the meta once again. The dual blades. The spin to win. 
you no longer stand completely still while entering demon mode. There also appears to be this special dodge and if I were to take a guess I would say this prevents your weapon from losing sharpness for a couple attacks after successfully dodging an attack, which is why the weapon glows for a while. There also appears to be a whole new move that at first I thought was a replacement for the demon dance, but the demon dance still exists so it seems to just be a whole new move altogether. The focus mode is a jump move they've taken from aerial dual blades in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, which can be followed up by a slinger attack. I'm really curious to see how this weapon plays with these new attacks and if I was right about the sharpness thing, cause if that is true, we're in for a treat. The Lance. Yes, I'm saving best for last. For those who want to hide behind a shield like a little bit. This weapon can now sidestep while poking, making it more accurate. We also get a new triple poke attack at the end of a combo. Instaguard still seems to exist as we can see the glow on the lance shield at the start of a guard. And the timed guard seems to go into a shield bash. For the focus mode we get a shield uppercut which is really cool. And as most of you know, lance is my main weapon which is why I saved it for last. So you're probably wondering what I thought when I saw the trailer. And honestly, I thought it was a bit underwhelming. Now maybe this was because the bow was revealed right before and that got some insane stuff, I really don't know. But all changes I've seen look really good. It just doesn't seem to pack as much punch as the other weapons do. But hey, that's just my opinion. The shield uppercut is really cool like everyone said, but I just don't feel like we'll be getting to use that very much as it's the focus mode. Attack. But we truly don't know all that much about the way Lance is going to play in this game as we don't see the levels of guard, we don't see how many guard up levels there are, how much chip damage, the stamina use, etc. So only time will tell how it truly plays, but you bet I'll be playing it and you better know I'm hyped to do so. If you ever wondered why Lance was the least popular weapon in Monster Hunter Rise, check out my previous video where I explain what influenced that. Now I want to end by addressing two questions I got. Number one. Do you think styles from Monsanto Generations Ultima are making a return? I do not. There was only one attack that took inspiration from Generations Ultimate which was the Dual Blades Focus attack and other than that pretty much all attacks appear to be inspired by switch skills or wirebug moves. So I don't think it's gonna make a return. Question number two. Do you think switch skills are making a return? This is definitely possible as there have been several moments while watching the weapon trailers where I thought, wow, so they chose that move over the other? So I would say it's certainly a possibility, but we don't know anything for sure right now. I'm tempted to say no, but it's definitely possible after having seen all these trailers. Now, I'm not perfect, so if I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and thanks for watching.